So there's a new camera, it's from Lumix. It's the G9 Mark II. Let's take a look. What you got here is a 25.2 micro four thirds sensor designed around high speed shooting. 13 stops of dynamic range and eight stops of image stabilization with in-camera 100 megapixel stills handheld. 5.7K video at 60p, an ISO range between 100 and 25,600. Intuitive and easy to use controls and four channel audio with two SD card slots. This is a really cool camera, but wait, there's something else. Big thing is with this one though, is that they've actually introduced hybrid face tech autofocus. And that's gonna be really interesting to check out. Tell you what, let's do it, shall we? Tyler. Yes. Can you help me check out the autofocus on the uh, G9 Mark II? Your name is a wiggle. Uh, yeah, well this is the A7S3. So let's change over to the G9 Mark II. Here we are with the Lumix now. The camera did perform pretty well for the autofocus test and I was actually quite surprised because usually Micro Four Thirds cameras break up around this kind of time. For this test though, I wanted to make it a little bit more difficult. And with the fact that this camera comes with Animal AF, I'd like to introduce you to someone very special, Saren. Again, because I don't want to make it too easy for the camera, what I wanted to do is use a 12mm f1.4 and it worked. It works really well. Does this mean I'm going to start liking Lumix cameras more? I mean, let's check the stabilization out to see if that's actually really good as well. So your main questions are probably, what is the audio like inside of the camera? Because it's useful to have good audio if you don't necessarily have a mic. And the other side of it is, is the picture good, but also is the stabilization good? So what do you reckon? The stabilization for handheld kind of vlogging situations, is it working? Is it not working? I'll pass you on to Stuart in the edit suite to tell you a little bit more. So usually I have a massive problem with the stabilization inside of Lumix cameras. I usually find it quite sickly, but the stabilization in this particular camera was really clean and it didn't have that weird warp that I've seen in a lot of their cameras. Hmm. Also, that audio, pretty damn good. I'm surprised it was that good, to be honest with you. Let's go back. Meanwhile, on my camera. So, while Stuart's out and about gallivanting about the G9 Mark II, which, by the way, is an awesome system. As a Micro Four Thirds, it really gives you a lot of great options. I've decided to tell you all that, uh, while Stuart's on his way back walking behind me, that I am so beautiful and so stunning. And uh, now he's going to take pictures to capture the beauty and the moment. Uh. And this is another thing that I was actually fairly impressed with. The images came out really good looking and I can't see anything that I disliked about it so far. Get some games! <laughs> I decided not to shoot on vlog throughout most of the footage I shot with the G9 Mark II. Just before seeing how the colour just looked out of camera. And it's gorgeous. The shots that I got came out brilliant. So this is actually on a separate shoot now. I'm going to be shooting some stuff with the for Olympus as well as some videos in general today with Garrett Radford, one of their ambassadors. I decided to take the S9 Mark II and take some photos of the wildlife at the moment. And uh, Garrett is not here at the moment, so this gives me a perfect chance to test here because we've got a lot of uh, moving waterfalls and stuff. I wanted to test being able to shoot handheld at lower shutter speeds to see kind of what that comes out like. Let's give it a go, shall we? And the photos came out really nice. The bits that I wanted sharp are sharp. And then the bits that I wanted smooth are really nice and smooth. There is a unique quality about this camera, but also you can do 100 megapixel stills. And this was all shot handheld. That's incredible. It is a camera which, you know, it's not something that I would necessarily think of that I, I'd actually enjoy shooting with because I very much like my full frame cameras. I like them to be reliable, good in low light and good autofocus. But with this, Panasonic are really making a lot of attempts to actually change that perception of, of their cameras recently. So talking about perception, these are the video specs. You've got the cinematic at 5.7K and the anamorphic at 5.8K. You've got a whole suite of really awesome slow motion options here as well. For the photo specs, 
You've got 779 autofocus points with new detection modes, as well as mechanical shutter being 14 frames per second and electronic shutter being 75 frames per second. This camera has a whole suite of really amazing specs throughout the board, and this camera impresses me. Um, and I wasn't expecting it, really, from a Panasonic camera, because I'm not necessarily saying I'm judgmental of Panasonic cameras in general, but this one, this is interests me and with their new suite of cameras they're really changing what might be a personal preference of mine to something a little bit more fluid and i'm interested the price range of the camera is 1500 to two grand and that's for different kit options i'm guessing and if you're interested in the camera make sure you pre-order it down below i really enjoyed this what do you think let me know down below in that comments like, follow, and subscribe if you want to see more. Have a good day. There's always a good click on them as well, isn't there?